Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I want to show you how I took this arcade machine and made it play a bunch of other games. So I got this cool little arcade machine from my wife for Christmas. This one is Galega, or Galaga, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's got some nice graphics on here. It plays very similar to the original game. Uh, it's a really nice, fun little retro arcade machine, but it doesn't have the expense or the space taken up at your house that a full-size size arcade machine would. Um, a couple things that are kind of cool about it, it actually has a headphone and uh, headphone jack and volume control in back, built-in speakers, and it can run off four AA batteries, but it also has a USB connection for a power supply down here as well. Now, I made it one entire day before I wanted to take this thing apart to see how it works, see what's inside. Maybe it could be repurposed with a, like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. So I started digging into the internet a little bit, take a look at some uh, arcade emulator, web forums, that sort of thing. And I found that people were in fact already modifying these. And really what it came down to uh, the typical modification was to make it play video games that were actually already on here. So let me show you exactly what I did. Let's go to the photos. Okay, so here's the machine pretty much straight out of the box, just batteries added. Uh, here's a quarter for scale for you. Um, it's basically just plastic with decals over the side. So to open this up, the very first thing is actually to peel back the decals. And by kind of touching on the side, you can... Um, you can actually feel where the screws are because there is sort of a little uh, detent where the screws are. So what I did was just start peeling it back to get at the screws. They're just a very small Phillips screw. And you have to peel back the decal uh, relatively gently because you don't want it to tear. As long as you take it kind of slow, maybe heat it a little bit, uh, it works just fine. Uh, this side did not peel off as easily, fortunately, the decal wasn't damaged or anything other than that little bit you see there, and it did, in fact, stick back on just fine. Once the decals are off, you can pull uh, the screws and the sides, and then there's four screws on the back of the unit as well that need to be pulled out. And with that, you can take a look at the guts in here. Uh, this is the back of the unit. Uh, we've got the built-in speaker. Up here is the headphone jack and the volume control buttons. And this is a ribbon cable that can just be unplugged so that you can just take the whole back um, out and away. This is the power button. That's actually behind the little fake coin slot in the front here. It's got a pair of LEDs that light it up. And another thing you can see in this photo, uh, for example, here we can just unplug this ribbon cable. However, on these boards, those are just soldered in place, so these parts are going to have to stick together. Right here is the main board. This is essentially right behind the video screen. So what I had to do was uh, pull out these screws to get it out, and then I also disconnected that power button just so I could pull it all out as a unit, essentially. So here, everything is out. I pulled out the control panel. And right here, you can see the screen, which was just held on top of the main board right here. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Here is the main board. And in fact, if you want to get rid of the, uh, the screen as well, you can pull these two little tabs that direction and this little teeny tiny ribbon cable will come right out. Now, what we're looking at here is under this is the main chip but over here, this is the part that we want to deal with. So what I did was I pulled away this little piece of foam that's basically just a spacer, um, just a little foam uh, spacer for the screen. But with it pulled away, we can see this other area here that was potted. And this is actually where there's jumpers which control which game uh, essentially gets loaded on startup. Now, I did find on instructables.com, somebody had a nice how-to of exactly how to do this. And on his project, there was not this black epoxy potting here. So maybe what happened is this manufacturer has been making these. Uh, they put a couple of games on each of these cards so that, uh, you know, they don't need a, a separate dedicated card for each of the different games that they make. Uh, it's just controlled by a jumper. But uh, maybe they got wind that people were hacking their games. They didn't want to do that. So they started adding the epoxy. 
So what I needed to do was to get through this epoxy somehow. Um, I kind of tried a couple different ways. Basically, it's very hard. So what I ended up doing was using a Dremel tool with the smallest grindstone that I had. Now, in this photograph here, there's actually a little foreshortening. Uh, that grinding tool is smaller than it looks uh, compared to the circuit board. But here you can see that I've started grinding down on that uh, to get to the traces on the board. Here's a close-up. I uh, wish this was in better focus, but these are very, very small parts here. Uh, right here you can see that I'm just starting to get to the jumper. Here's a little better view that uh, you can see it's really small. I mean, it's like smaller than a surface mount resistor. So it was very challenging to do this because I had to have a very steady hand, look really close. Uh, frankly, a magnifying glass would not have hurt to have at this point. So once I was able to uh, scrape away enough of this epoxy, I was able to put a soldering iron on here and get that jumper off. Uh, there's three pads underneath here, and then they're either connected to the ground, which is on this side, or not. And I found that when I just removed the jumper, when none of these three pads were connected to the ground, uh, the game would play Rolling Thunder. So since I had it all apart, but I still had batteries in there, I could just turn it on and check to see which game I was getting. Uh, then I started jumpering it just with a... Uh, uh, a paper clip basically uh, the different pads just to see if I could get different games to go and I found that I had Pac-Man on there that was pretty exciting and also a game called Mappy this was sort of a less popular game but my daughter actually is having a lot of fun playing this one now in this photo too here you can see those little pads that are revealed so I just had to grind down real careful real slow uh, and also pay attention not to accidentally damage any of the other components that were on the board. Now, you would think that there would only be three games on here because there's three of these pads. But right away when I took that jumper off, I could see, well, there was a fourth game, that Rolling Thunder, when none of them are jumpered together. Uh, here we've got Mappy uh, and Pac-Man. But what I found out is by jumpering multiple pads, you could get at other games. Uh, so Dig Dug was kind of the fun last one that I found. And what we see here too is we kind of skipped a step and that was uh, me doing the actual soldering, which was very challenging. This is really, really small. Uh, right here, these are actually 22 gauge wires. They were the smallest wires that I had around. And the pads, very, very small, but the red, uh, the red, blue, and yellow wires are to each of these three pads, and then the black here is just connected to one of those grounds. So at that point, all I had to do then is just touch the ends of the wires together, hit the reset button, and I'd get different games to come up on the system. Uh, my daughter certainly liked uh, playing Dig Dug, and here we're fooling around with the machine still open. Uh, because these are very small components, uh, you don't want to put any, um, you know, you don't want to be pulling on these wires. So here I gobbed it up with a little hot glue uh, to cover up the connections and to add um, kind of some mechanical strain relief to the wires. And then I was able to put the machine back together. I just drilled a hole in the back, ran the wires through, and then we could pinch the different wires together to select the game. And the only reason why I did that was I didn't have any switches around. You know, we used to have a Radio Shack around. I could run to the store, buy a dip switch or whatever I needed. And we don't have those anymore. So instead, I would have to mail order some switches and wait for those to show up. Uh, pretty fun, though, getting to play Pac-Man on a Galega machine. So here's the wires just sticking out the back here. All I did was just drilled a very small hole and then uh, basically just pinch the blue wire to the black wire or the red wire to the black wire or whatever combination for whichever game we're looking for. So here's the view with the wires just coming out from uh, the reinstalled main board. I drilled a little hole right back here, just fed the wires through and then closed up the game. So when I did get my switch, uh, this is a dip switch. It's got uh, three uh, individual switches on here. And I put it in that small hole and then traced around it. I just kind of scratched with a uh, X-Acto knife here uh, to make a mark. And then I took uh, the Dremel with a cutting tool and squared this off. I uh, used a 3 eighths 
diameter drill to make the hole here as that was about how big this was if it was a circle and then just squared off the corners. So here we see from the inside, I know it doesn't look great, but it's the inside, not the outside. Here's the switch. And then what I had to do was solder onto the legs of the switches. I do not even pretend to be good at soldering. Again, these are very, very small parts. Uh, you definitely need a soldering iron with a very fine tip to it. You need a, a good point to work with. And these are small parts too, so even just holding them is a little challenging. Uh, for scale, this is a standard clothespin, just holding the part still while I solder on it. So we've got three legs, we've got three colored wires, and then the black wire, which is the ground, goes to the other three. So depending which switch is flipped, uh, determines what game's going to come up here, but each of the three then goes to ground. So we tested this, and switching different combinations of the switches would let us play Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Galaga, Galaxian, a whole bunch of different games. And of course, I wanted to test that uh, before putting the game back together again. Uh, to physically mount the switch in here, I just used a big old glob of hot glue. Uh, hot glue is nice because it also uh, insulates and uh, mechanically holds the wires in place. So it's being used as strain relief, strain relief insulation and also to physically hold the switch in there. Uh, these switches are really designed more like to go onto a breadboard. It's not really designed to hold itself into a hole, so I just used the glue for that. Here's just another view. And from the outside, I just held the switch in place with a little bit of uh, masking tape while I did the gluing here. Uh, also, if my hole was just ever so slightly too big, it would keep uh, glue from coming through there. And that's basically what the dip switch looks like when it's all finished. Uh, it's held in there pretty well. Uh, it's low profile, which I really like. Um, I saw another project somebody did. They put a rotary knob on there, which was kind of a cool idea, but I didn't like the way that it stuck out on the back of the machine. So now we've got a bunch of games on here. Here's Mappy. Uh, here's my daughter trying this out. Again, just seeing the switch kind of uh, for scale here. And otherwise, the game system still looks original other than this on the back. Now, one thing I did not do is I didn't add a button for Rolling Thunder. In that game, we only have a shoot button. We would also need a jump button. But I didn't want to kind of wreck the cabinet by drilling a hole in there, soldering in another button for just one game that I don't even really like that game that much. So we just stuck with the one button for uh, Galaga, Dig Dug, Mappy, those games that just need one button anyways. Uh, Galaxian is another game that's on here. And one thing that I found now is since I really can't get, you know, just simple electronics locally, um, I have to mail order them. So if I'm going to order one little thing, I may as well order 10 or a whole box or whatever. Because what happens then is for the next project, I'll have them in stock. I don't have to wait a few days for mail order or anything else. I'll, I'll have them handy for next time. And that's what the dip switch looks like. I've got three of them just to show you the back, the top, the front. So that's really it. I mean, it was a, a fun little project. It was pretty straightforward to do. Um, it's a cool little cabinet. Uh, and this was just available at uh, major retailers. Uh, my wife bought this at Walgreens, but you can get these at Walmart, Amazon.com, places like those. Uh, the brand name is My Arcade. Uh, it's a fun little project. It's fun just as a game as it is. Like I said, it's got headphone jacks and volume control, so it's really not bad at all. But if you can get a couple of free video games that are already in here built right in, just with a little soldering and a little switch, I think that's pretty cool. Now, I almost forgot to show you exactly how to flip from one game to another. So here's the original Galaga, and on the back, all we have to do is flip our switches. So if I just put the right hand one up all the way, that's going to be Pac-Man. And we don't have to cycle the power or anything. All we have to do is hit the reset button, give it a second to boot up, and now we got Pac-Man. So make sure to check uh, in the video description. I've got uh, links for where you can buy this from, uh, links to some other similar projects that people have done. So take a look at those. Uh, make sure if you like these projects, 
uh, subscribe, you know, share with your friends, that sort of thing. I would absolutely love if you would do that. We're also on Patreon. Come check us out there and at 300mpg.org for all my kind of eco-friendly renewable energy and clean transportation projects. So until next time, stay charged up. <laughs>